Now I get this question all the time now. Why use Octane Render when Unreal Engine has Lumen and its own path tracer as well? I wanna do this video, which is a deep dive and a rundown of the pros and cons of each renderer. And I'm gonna break this into four categories, quality, speed, accuracy, and compatibility. So we're gonna use this scene, which I built in the last video, and I've rendered it with each Lumen path tracer and Octane. Go and have a look at some renders, do some pixel peeping and figure out the pros and cons of each. Starting with Lumen. This is a Lumen render without RTX. It's actually just Lumen reflections. But what you'll notice, and something that I see all the time in renders all over the internet using Lumen, aliased, jaggy reflections and highlights. I can tell you now, no matter how many samples in ray tracing I throw at it, and no matter how many temporal and spatial samples I throw at it, this issue persists. So the jaggies, the aliasing, seems to be something that I can't fix, and one of the main reasons that I don't really use Lumen, amongst other things. One of which is that, to me, it just kind of looks like a game I know that Unreal is a game engine, but we're trying to make films, and this just kind of looks fake, you know? I don't know what it is, it's sort of an intangible thing, and it's my opinion, but the geometry seems to be particularly harsh, and everything looks over sharp. I promise, this is not just some big whinge video, okay? I'm not gonna, oh. Moving on to Path Tracer. Now, I really like Path Tracer, so whatever I say in criticism, I'm well aware that it's a work in progress. I really like it. And <laughs> at a thousand samples, it's still quite noisy. You can find fireflies and noise, especially in dark areas. You know, the solution to that is crank the samples up. But of course, as you do, it will increase your render times. It also has its own denoiser, uh, but that's a bit heavy and can make things look a bit splotchy and messy. Overall, you don't see any jaggies. Uh, there's, there's not the same problems that you find with Lumen and everything just seems more physical and much more real, which I love. And the lighting is, of course, physically accurate, which makes ah, such, a, such a big difference, actually. And finally, for visual quality, Octane at a thousand samples is generally cleaner than Path Tracer. However, it does have an adaptive sampling setting, which allows it to sample more into noisy areas, which means that you overall get a much more stable image across the board. It does have also a denoiser, which to me is fairly good, but again, I are in favor of using an external software like DaVinci or Neat Video. Now, although Octane may have an overall more stable image, it still has some issues, and in this one, towards the very far distance, you can see some kind of wibbliness going on there, and that's uh, a lack of sampling. Not perfect, but nothing is. Now, I'm not biased. I'm not being paid. I just really think Octane wins on visual quality, because, I mean, what sells it here? That god ray coming through the back of the building. Let's move on to speed. Lumen was fastest. Lumen wins by a landslide of 16 temporal and 16 spatial samples. It took 20 minutes for a pure Lumen scene and 35 minutes when using ray traced reflections. Really fast. Path Tracer at a thousand samples took 30 minutes. Octane's a real drag uh, for speed. Octane took eight hours so so long uh to do this scene at a thousand samples even with adaptive sampling eight hours is a very long time to wait for nine seconds lumen wins moving on to light accuracy now lumen is inaccurate we know this but that's not the point of lumen lumen is rather pretty generally when it comes to light but in terms of accuracy if you're looking to create physical lighting then Lumen's probably not the way to go. Path Tracer is, of course, very accurate. It's a path tracer. It traces paths. What could be more accurate than that? Actually, and I did stumble onto this by a complete accident, it does still take into account the light attenuation values for point lights, area lights, and spotlights, which means that unless you're scaling up your attenuation and increasing it to a size where it would naturally affect the scene, uh, then it won't take that into account, which is a shame for a path tracer because I kind of just expect it to disregard things like attenuation. Octane is super accurate. It's what they call an unbiased path tracer, so it doesn't take into account anything to do with 
light attenuation. There's obviously plenty of features to tweak the scene within Octane as well, but ultimately it's a very accurate representation of what the light would actually do in the real world. I think Octane wins that one. Final section, compatibility. I think Lumen has full compatibility. For instance, you don't have trouble when you're adding objects or assets or effects, Niagara, Nanite or volumetrics. Anything seems to work with Lumen. So you can throw anything you want at Unreal Engine, large textures, large meshes, and, and in real time as well, which is just so, so incredible. If physical accuracy isn't completely necessary and you can make Lumen work for what you're doing, then it's absolutely hands down the way you need to be going. You can have unbound creative flexibility with that bit of software. Quite clearly, Lumen has the edge in this category, for sure. Path Tracer, on the other hand, doesn't have as much compatibility yet. It still can't handle decals and it doesn't deal with volumetrics. Also, Path Tracer can't deal with Nanite. So if you want to use a hero asset, something really nice and detailed, maybe some photogrammetry, you might as well just use a mesh that's log zero. Uh, there is no point to using Nanite because all it's going to do is use the fallback mesh, uh, which may not be the quality you're after. One of my personal bugbears about Path Tracer is it also doesn't work with the hidden shadow feature and that could be a really useful feature for anyone trying to render backgrounds or do virtual production. That's a bit of an annoyance for me and probably one of the only a couple of things that's stopping me from going gung-ho into Path Tracer. Octane's a tricky one because although it has low compatibility, similar to that of Path Tracer, it has its own systems that handle things that natively Unreal would normally handle. So exponential height fog, not supported, but it has its own volume fog medium. It also doesn't deal with the sun and sky sphere, but you can create HDRIs from Unreal and port them over to Octane. So there's some hacky workarounds and I've covered them in a previous video. I'll link that above. But the biggest miss is motion blur from Octane. For me, I've ended up rendering things out, putting them into DaVinci and adding a motion blur effect afterwards. On top of that, the sheer amount of memory that textures and geometry can take up in Octane means that rendering scenes that you've built for Lumen might just crash with Octane. I've had to go through large scenes like this city scene, decimate meshes and reduce texture sizes, anything from 2K, 4K, right down to 128. Because it doesn't handle that on its own, you gotta do it yourself. And while that's good practice, it's annoying, <laughs> so I, I'm not a fan of that either. So to round up, Lumen is great. In real time, uh, it can look great on a LED wall for real time graphics. It's perfect for all of that. And to be fair, you could probably still use it as an out of focus background. You don't need to have path traced everything all the time. If you use Octane or Path Tracer to get a ground truth, of what the scene would be like, then you could probably mess with the lighting and tweak settings until Lumen looks more in line with the path traced results. So you might actually end up with something really quick to render without the need for chugging through frames and path tracer or octane. That's the use of a path tracer. It's there so you know what reality would look like and then you can use that to inform your Lumen scene. So it's a super tool put it in your bag. So back to the question, why do I use Octane? Well, because I do a lot of work with media planes, a green screen pre-keyed footage, I need something that works with translucency, particularly translucency and depth of field, which Octane handles physically perfectly. Those are my reasons, but they may not be your reasons. So everything in this video, it's probably gonna change really soon. Out of all of these things and compatibility issues, it's kind of just soup of what you want and what you don't want and what you can handle and what you can't. What works for you?